Hello again. We're going to continue on with chapter 10.2, Multiplication Principle. What we're going to start with is the definition of multiplication principle, where we say for any real numbers A, B, and C, where C is not equal to zero. We can now say if A equals B, then it is equivalent to A times C equals B times C. Now you might be wondering, why am I concerned about C not equaling zero? Or maybe you're not, and I'm just gonna tell you anyway. So suffer through. We have very strict reasons why C can e equal zero. Let's actually start with something a little bit more basic before I go to this example. If we have anything times zero, that is zero. So if I were to try to go backwards from this rule, which would be kind of crazy, I could say I have zero equals zero. And you'd agree with me, that's a true statement. But then I could change things up a little bit where I could take, I don't know, two times zero, that's still zero, right? Or I could have three times zero, and that's still zero. And then I would be saying, well, if I multiplied zero on both sides, just like how I did with C here, I could go back where I say A must equal B. So two must equal three, which is complete nonsense. That's not true. So that's why we're a little bit touchy about this C can equal zero because zero kind of eats everything. Whenever we multiply by zero, we just get zero. It could be crazy stuff going on there, but once we multiply by zero, it's gone. So we have to be very careful with our rules. We won't come across this being necessary in our course, but in your future math courses, you will see where zero could be a very dangerous thing. So let's go ahead, um, pretty much let's turn this um, fancy statement of a principle into a little bit more basic of a term. Uh, pretty much whatever we do to one side, we must do the same to the other. And before we get started with solving equations, I wanna go over another rule in which we're going to talk about reciprocals. And if you remember, we defined reciprocals if we have a fraction, A over B, the reciprocal of it, which is not equivalent to, but it's a reciprocal of, is B over A. Whatever's in the bottom goes up top, whatever's in the top goes into the bottom. This will be very useful to us. And then there's also the identity, um, which we don't normally call it by name, but we say if we have one times anything, that's the same thing. So we'll get used to these two thoughts. We'll use them very often. And let's not forget, we have another rule, so to speak, and I just remembered it now. Anything divided by itself is one. So just keep these ideas in mind as we go ahead and solve for a variable. So our first question will be nice to ourselves. Let's say we have nine X equals negative 108. Now, the first order of business is we have nine times x. Before, when we were working with the addition principle, we had adding or subtracting going on. Here, for the multiplication principle, we'll have multiplying and dividing. We'll treat them kind of the same idea. So we have nine times x. We want to solve for x. We want the solution, so get x by itself. Sometimes what I tell students is that x is a lion and everything else is zebras. And the lion's very hungry, so the zebras run away from the lion. So nine here is a zebra, he wants to run away from the lion. So the only way he can get rid of, get away from him is by going across the equal sign. And how we do that is by undoing whatever operations occurring next to our x. Right now we're multiplying, so to undo it, we divide. So this is a division symbol, and what we divide by is nine. And whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to make sure we do to the other. That's what the principle says. Now, nine divided by nine, if you're picky about it, that's one. And you have one times x. And what we just said is one times anything is the same thing. So we're left with x. Now it's up to us to go ahead and simplify this. So nine can go into 108. Well, let's say you don't know your multiplication tables, and that's okay. You could do 9 into 108. Whatever's in the bottom divides into the number up top. 9 times 1 is the closest you get to 10. Subtract, you got 1, bring down the 8. 
and 9 times 2 is the closest you'll get to 18 in which you have no remainder. Now, go back. Don't forget, we had a negative here. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. So our solution is x equals negative 12. Okay? So let's head into a little bit more challenging of a problem. Let's throw in our favorite thing in existence, fractions. Let's say we have 2 fifths v equals 1 third. There are a couple ways you could tackle this problem. Uh, the best way to tackle this is always to stick true to our roots, just kind of like how we treated the first problem. We have something times x. So to undo it, we divide. That's what we're going to do here. We have an ugly something, 2 fifths times v. He's our variable. We want to solve for the variable. So in order to undo that multiplication, we are going to divide by 2 fifths. And whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do the same to the other. Now, in order for us to divide by a fraction, instead we multiply by the reciprocal, right? So we have the same thing over the same thing on this side. We can cancel it off. And if you're uncertain about that, remember our rule. Same thing over the same thing is really 1. And 1 times anything is the same thing. So we're left with v by itself. That side was nice. If we go to the other side, we have a fraction divided by a fraction. We have 1 third divided by 2 fifths. Well, instead of dividing by a fraction, instead we can multiply by the reciprocal. We keep change flip. If you're able to reduce, do so. You can't here, so we'll multiply straight across. And we have v equals 5 6. Now I'm sure you're begging to say, can I check that? I know I screw up with fractions all the time. I would like to check my solution. And you're absolutely right. We can check this. So how we're going to check is rewrite the original thing. We have 2 fifths times v equals 1 third. And instead of v here, we are going to plug in what we solved v to equal. We said it equaled 5, 6. So now let's see. Is, are these two statements equivalent? Well, 5 goes into itself once, goes into itself once. 2 can go into itself once. 2 can go into 6 3 times. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Does 1 third equal 1 third? And it sure does. So definitely this is our solution. So when in doubt, you can always check by plugging it back into the original equation. All right, so that's how fractions work. Let's try the next challenging one, which is decimals. And decimals aren't too bad. You just have to remember our rules for how we divide with decimals or multiply with decimals, whichever operation we have to perform. So currently we have 5.9x equals 17.7. .7. So it's always good to remind yourself what's going on between this constant and the variable. Well, multiplication. And in order to undo multiplication, we divide. And what we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other side of the equation. Now, 5 ninths divided by 5, oh, I'm sorry, I said that completely wrong. 5.9 divided by 5.9 is really 1. 1 times anything is the same thing, so we're left with x. And now we have to do this division. And we can't divide by a decimal, but we can divide by a whole number, so we'll make this 5.9 a whole number. Whatever we do to the bottom, we gotta do to the top. So really what we have here is 177 divided by 59. And if you can't do that in your head, that's fine. You can try all and error it. Let's see, we have 59. Well, I want something that'll end in a seven. So nine times what ends in a seven? Well, I think three, right? 9 times 3 is 27, carry the 2. 3 times 5 is 15, plus the 2, oh, good deal. So, 59 can go in there 3 times, and we have x equals 3. Now, your brain's probably worrying, like, what if it didn't go in evenly? Okay, good question. Just reduce the fraction. And since you started with decimals, your answer should end in decimals. I will always have in the directions described to you how the answer should be. 
I should say we all write it as a fraction or write it as a mixed numeral or write it as a decimal or write it as a whole number. It will be there and your homework is very kind to you in which it always tells you what it's looking for. For this one it would say write as a whole number or a decimal for your answer. But the one thing you should always keep in mind is see if you can reduce. Always try to reduce because that I will never say to you. That's always in the back of your mind that you should be reducing if able to. The only time you not to reduce is if I say don't reduce, okay? Now, let's do one more. This one's gonna be a little bit funky, but it will be much easier than the previous ones, in which we have negative x equals 42. All right, so you might be thinking, well, x is already by itself, I'm done. And you know that's not true. You've got to do more work than that. This is math class, we're evil. So we have negative x equals 42. That negative in front of the x, that's really negative one times x. That's really what's going on there. And we wanna undo it because we wanna solve for x. We don't wanna solve for negative x. If we did, I would tell you that. But I want x by itself. So in order to undo this multiplication, we're going to divide by negative one. And what we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other. So now we're left with x by itself, because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So we have now positive x, that's what we want to solve for. Here we have 42 divided by negative 1. Positive divided by a negative is a negative. 42 divided by 1 is just 42. And there is your solution. And that's probably one of the worst that it'll get. Let's do one more, because each time we've been doing this, we've been dividing. So let's try one where we have to multiply. Let's say we have negative x over seven. Ooh, I lied, I lied. We just have x, I'll be nicer. We have x over seven equals nine. And we wanna get x by itself. Currently, the way we read this is x divided by, right, seven. We wanna undo division. The opposite of dividing is multiplying. And we're going to multiply by what's on the bottom. So we're going to multiply by 7. And what we do to one side of the equation, we better do the same to the other. Now, on this side, we have 7 times x over 7. Well, the 7s cancel each other out. Same thing over itself is really 1. 1 times x is just x. And 9 times 7 is 63. So there's your solution. And that is it for this section. Keep on practicing, and I'll see you in the next section.